Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. I think um, we have about 12 hours of interviews with uh, Sheikh Dr. Omar Zaid so far. And uh, so today, inshallah, we're going to talk about this uh, new world order or the Dajjali system and marriage and in and, and marriage in general, but then specifically looking at our situation. And yesterday, uh, Dr. Omar mentioned that chivalry and manhood is gone and it's been replaced by male chauvinism, which I, I, I can't agree more. I mean, it's completely true because I counsel people, people come to me uh looking at you know uh so many couples especially the young couples right uh the divorce rate is extremely high in the muslim world and 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 so inshallah we'll get some guidance from dr umar on what's going on and what is uh you know this whole issue with marriage and he's spent uh, i've seen he's spent a lot of time thinking about the subject and and has I think you have is the book published or it's it's not published. Uh, it's it's about published. it's about to be published. I hope within the next year or two, uh, with the help of subscriptions. I can only get online because I don't have the money to 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 publish it properly. Uh, right. So I I it's it's quite a, an undertaking, and um, so if you're ready to begin, we we'll, we we'll, yes. we'll start. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, so, Dr. Umar, we left off talking about uh, the lack of uh, manhood and uh, chivalry mm. and how chivalry, uh, as opposed to uh, the male chauvinist who just wants to kind of like um, have the authority of being the husband and force mm. his will uh, rather mm. than have chivalry, which is to become selfless and mm being the selfless guy in the house, so to say. Yes. yes. And and so why don't you take it from there, inshallah? Uh Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. May it please Allah to grant us uh, wisdom and refuge in this conversation. And Dr. Omar, what would you say about I say this in a lot of my counseling sessions and I want yes. to know what you think. I usually say a good husband is a pushover. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, a lady should be able to use one finger just to push him over, yeah. But that's only if her charms are kept within the dean, you see. And the dean has everything to do with divine order. And you'll mm -hmm. notice that almost everything, every time we talk, I'm talking about divine order. Yes, you see? yes. And uh, this is something that is uh, holy, it is sacred. And marriage is half the deen. Mm. Well, my God, let me, let me say this. Okay, if it's half the deen, and uh, the Quran says that, uh, that your deen is not going to be acceptable <laughs> unless it is uh, an Islamic deen, you see, and it has to be Islam, you see. Uh, well, if marriage is half the deen, let's compare it to, you know, the apple. There's nothing wrong with that. So if I want to bring the king, somebody's bragging about, uh, you know, so-and-so's garden, and he has the best apple tree in the kingdom. And the king says, bring me an apple. <laughs> if I bring an apple and it's, cut in half and I only present the king with half the apple, is he going to accept that? Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. So you have a problem with marriage in the Ummah, and not just the Ummah, but the entire world. Yeah. Marriage has been under attack for centuries and of course, we know something about the origins of this attack because it began in what is called the Garden of Eden. It began with the, uh, the temptation. And the temptation began with Eve because she has a certain uh, charm and power over her husband, all right? If she uh, has this particular charm, she can use it to just push him, you know, just, you know, just a hint. And of course, the man, if he's not following the dean 
personally, you know, in himself, he will then agree. And they will both, you know, sh they will both uh, uh, veer away from uh, the kingdom principles. Now we're talking about kingdom principles here when you're talking about the gene. What do these principles govern? These principles govern everything. Everything. You're talking about... Uh, very very uh, similar government. to what the prophet said, I won't eat the honey. Yes. Right? And, yes. Uh, and even though the prophet said, personally, I'm not going to eat honey, he never said it's haram. Yes. But the first verse that came out in Tahrim is, why do you make what is halal into haram? Mm -hmm. Because that's how mm -hmm. we would have taken it. If the prophet did not eat honey, we would have been like, oh, maybe it's not allowed. And so, uh, you know... Uh, and, and so I guess, you know, so the Tahrim and Sutta Talaq are two surahs. And so one deals with loving your wife aspect and the other is more like, uh, n you know, don't be too harsh aspect. Yes. Or being yes. hard, like using a... Severe. A, yeah. Anyway, severe. please continue. So this, uh, this deen, this divine principles, this divine order that is both individual and collective, okay, has everything to do with what we're talking about yesterday, has everything to do with chivalry, with honor, because it deals with just governance, you mm. see. It deals with rulership, it deals with um, uh, subordination of one's uh, consciousness and will to divine principles. It deals with um, uh, reward and punishment, okay? So this, we're talking about justice. We're talking about servitude, becoming a slave of Allah, according to the divine principles, in order to maintain dominion in governance. It mm. all begins with marriage, mm. you see? So if marriage is half the dean, the other half is in the public realm, mm. you see. So you can say, okay, well, marriage is half the dean. So that means you've got half the dean. You've got half of the uh, governance, the realm of governance is in a private realm. Okay. Yeah. The other half is in the public realm. But marriage is both is seen both privately and publicly. Okay. Now, I'm not talking about the sexual act. That is a different matter, but they're all connected. Okay. So it's all Tawheed. Now, I'm, that's distracting me. Sorry. Um, the, it's all Tawheed. So if you, if you disconnect one from the other, you are splitting the apple in half. And then you want to present this to Allah as your uh, deen, and it's going to be rejected because it's not Islamic, you see. So you have to have justice within the marriage. You have to have, in order to have justice, you have to submit to the divine order, to the divine principles, okay, of okay. rulership. And you have to then rule honorably, mm -hmm. okay? A chauvinist can't do this. Right. A chauvinist, by definition, has already rejected divine order. Mm. <laughs> He's rejected justice. He's rejected uh, servitude to Allah, to divine principles. And so his, uh, his uh, rulership is one of tyranny. Mm. There's only one tyrant in the universe, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the king. OK, so if you don't serve his divine principles, if you don't serve Allah's tyranny, you have to turn away and serve the tyranny offer, offered by Iblis. You mm -hmm. see, there, there's no in between. The humanists want to put man in between and say, oh, well, man is uh, he, he can also be the tyrant, you see, and man can be a polite tyrant, a good tyrant. Uh, without divine principles, no, this is not possible. You can approach them. But if you're approaching divine principles as a humanist, it's only because they're already in you. Mm. You see, inherently. So that's fitra. That is fitra coming through.
-hmm. If you listen to Iblis, you're overcoming, suppressing the fetra. So actually, the humanist is in a better position than the Islamist uh, uh, chauvinist. Right. (laughs) He's in a better position than the male chauvinist. That that is a very, very important point. And the male chauvinism, especially in the Muslim world, is caused by a lot of it's caused by the culture. Yes. And 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 how the guy has learned to behave looking at his dad. Yeah. Uh, or his daddy. Mm-hmm. And and then he when he is in that role, he he takes on a lot of those characteristics. But a humanist mm-hmm. a humanist is even though he's misguided, but he's still trying to come up with rules of life based upon his fitra. Yes, he's trying at least. Yes, so, he's trying based upon his fitra. And so that he mm-hmm. ends up in a much better situation he than can. a corrupt yes. culture. Yes, the corrupt culture and what you just, just described is pure idolatry. You see, yeah. because the son is worshipping the father. He's following the father. You see, and this is natural. All male children want to follow the father and Mm -hmm. all female children want to follow the mother. Mm -hmm. Now, if there's a division there, if there's a a diversion from that principle, there's some sort of uh, intervention that has occurred. And we can talk about that when we get to the LGBT problem. Right. Uh, eventually, but not now. Let's just keep on the Dean, because this is very, very important. If you don't understand the position of the Dean with respect to marriage, your Islam is null and void. Okay. Uh, So because and the Quran makes it very clear. If (laughs) you know, I will not accept the Dean. Okay. If it's not Islamic, and if you're not Islamic, the deen is not accepted. It's very yeah, it's and, very and the clear. Quran spends a lot more time discussing marriage issues yes. than even political issues, even economic issues, even other social issues. It spends a lot of time on marriage. Yes, because without a correct foundation uh, and governance within marriage, there is no justice to be found in the political world. It's not mm-hmm. there. It can't be there. You take the tyrant in marriage and put him in charge in the village, and you have just an expansion of his tyranny. That's right. That's all it is. And there's another important thing that I want to bring out here is, is this. Just as submission to Iblis suppresses fitra, mm. and that does away with true guidance, you see, because the, the true guidance that we get from, in, from the angelic realm and the feature that's already in us, they have to meet. Yes, yes. See? If you suppress the feature, there's no meeting the angel. That's it right. It doesn't that's happen. Right. It doesn't mm-hmm. happen. So what happens when you are suppressing your wife? <laughs> you're not only suppressing your feature, but you're suppressing hers. And right. you're suppressing the feature of the children. So all of this does never reaches the spiritual realm. All you have is Islam that never goes beneath the throat. It mm. does not penetrate the heart. Mm. Okay. So this problem with marriage must be overcome. Mm. It must be addressed because... The, everything else is, uh, if, if it's not addressed, then the dean is not acceptable because it is all in vain. Mm. See? It doesn't matter how many prayers, it doesn't matter how much dikir you do, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It yeah, another way to put it is accepted. you can do all the prayers you want, but if your wife is not happy with you because you're oppressing yeah. her. <laughs> and, <laughs> That's right. The very first thing I want to see when I meet a man is I want to meet his wife. Okay. And I want to look at her eyes. I want to see if the smile reaches the eyes, because then I know that the fitra is not being suppressed. Mm. There may be some wrong teaching, da 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 da, but the heart, 
okay, in which the fitra dwells is still rising, you mm. see. Mm. And, and that way, the spiritual principles can be met. You can meet the, the angels can descend to the right ideas, to the mm. right perception, to the right teaching, you see. So uh, this, is, this is very important, this whole problem. Now, the next principle, I, I think that's enough on the dean just to, in, to introduce the, uh, the, the problem. So let's just review that. If you want to have a correct ruler, okay, you have to begin with the husband, okay? Mm. And the husband has to rule according to divine principles. Because without divine principle, there's no justice. So without justice and without subordination of the husband to divine principles, okay, there's no deen. Mm -hmm. It's not happening. It's not happening. So there's no justice. There's, there's, it's tyranny. This is chauvinism. And this is a form of, let's make this very clear, it's a form of idolatry. Okay? Mm. And the definition of idolatry is vanity. Okay? Oh. And vanity has everything to do with pride. And once you enter the arrogance of pride, everything that you do, no matter how pious you look outwardly, is in vain. Now, vain means null and void. Yeah. It's empty. Just think of it as a vacuum. So all these men walking around with all these imaginations of all this wonderful glory that they've stored up for Jana is in vain. It's a vain imagination if they are tyrants, if they are chauvinists. Mm. Okay. So that's about the men. What about the women? <laughs> That's a different yeah, especially problem. With the problem of the feminazi, right? So, oh. uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, some women are, uh, they grew up in an environment where, especially Muslim women, they grew mm. up in an environment where they saw their parents not having the best of marriage. Yeah. So they, 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 they look for the alternative, which usually becomes that, uh, you know, they become career women and uh, they give a lot of importance to uh, not wanting to rely on men even uh and almost a type of disdain for men in a lot of times mm -hmm. uh, because of what they saw the mm -hmm. father doing with the mother and mm -hmm. uh and a lot of women i've uh, a lot of sisters i've met are scared to get married uh yeah for this yeah. reason alone yeah yeah because um, of this reason yeah this is a problem uh of reactionism Okay, because what's happening is here is the untrained, the untrained fitra in the woman is untrained here because there's no bridge being made. Okay, so she's reacting against this tyranny and that's natural. Um, it, it is a natural event. She doesn't want to submit herself to a tyrant. Okay, mm -hmm. but on the other hand, her own feature is forcing her to go in that direction, okay? Mm -hmm. She cannot fulfill her womanhood without the husband. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't happen. Now, women are trying to do that, but even if they uh, get someone to sire a child and then forget that sire, they're still wanton, you see? They're still left open. There's no covering. There's no uh, protection. There's no divine order. OK, mm. so they are, you know, they, they become the open womb okay, mm. for all sorts of intervention, not the least of which is gin. OK, mm -hmm. because without this covering, the woman is absolutely well, vulnerable in mm. all realms. OK, there's very, very even if you, you, you look at the best of all women. And uh, we have two to choose from. We have the mother of Isa and we have Pharaoh's wife. Okay. And not the least in, the, in let's not forget Khadija. Okay. Right. So um, these three women had to have a husband. Mm -hmm. Is it not true? Of yeah. course. Yes. And without that husband, 
this fulfillment of the deen, the fulfillment of their destiny, the fulfillment of Allah's word, kun faya kun, in all its uh, permutations, would not have occurred. Mm. Okay. So the women who are trying to do this, they're trying. They're also trying in vain. Now they may suffer less <laughs> than women who are under a tyrant. But you know what? What is this? You you got half a dozen of one, six of the other. You know mm-hmm. what? It it's still wrong. You see, both are wrong. There's mm-hmm. no middle ground here there, mm-hmm. because there's no ground. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, metaphysically or even physically. Now I say uh, I say both because well we understand divine principles at least we know that they're there. We may not understand them in the complete moral sense uh, because Islam still has not worked out a moral uh, uh, a system. A moral systematics in Islam is still wanting, and I think that's one of the things I'm trying to do with my concept of the uh, spiritual law, you see. Once I was uh, at a at an academic meeting, they said, uh, uh, Islam has a lot of content, but no method. Yes. And, yes. and and then they were talking about Christianity. We got method, but we have no content. <laughs> it's all fluff. <laughs> yes, we have to find this middle ground. And the middle ground in all things is only found in the deen. And it's only found in complementarity, hmm. okay, between man and wife. Complementarity. Now you see how those fit together very nicely. My yeah. two hands here. Uh, the male and the female are exactly like this, spiritually, metaphysically, and also physically. Now this physical complementarity goes down to the subatomic level, okay? Mm. And it has a, a basis in physical reality that is beyond uh, the gross chemistry that we understand. The chemical theory is uh, being set aside. It's being pushed on the shelf now. It's valid, but it's limited, okay? Mm because it doesn't explain these subtle things that happen at the subatomic level. Now I'm talking about the tensor vibrational configurations that bring things together at the subatomic level, okay? And this has to be complementarity. It has to be a complement. So the even as the elements, the subatomic elements complement each other, so does the male and the female complement each other so that the whole is completed. Think of the right and the left side of the brain, okay? If you split them, there's no communication between. Right. Okay, yeah. so you can actually, if you split the, uh, the corpus callosum that connects both sides, you, you, you can actually have a person who will neglect the right side of his body mm-hmm. and think it belongs to somebody else, okay? Or, and vice versa. This happens neurologically. It's quite a, 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 a phenomenon. Uh, so the male and the female go together like the right <laughs> and the left side of the brain. The right side of the brain, the left side of the brain are neither male nor female, okay? So, you know, the, 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 the modern abstract concepts have tried to impose those imaginations, but it's not true. Uh, you know, a tyrant, a male tyrant may be more left-brained, mm-hmm. uh, but the artist is more right-brained, mm-hmm. okay, you see? So it, they have to work together to bring this balance. Without the complementarity in marriage, there's no balance. And if the balance is not in the individual, if the individual is not completed, the dean in the marriage cannot be completed, and the dean in the political, social realms cannot be completed. Mm. And this cannot happen. Peter cannot meet with the angelic guidance. So one thing I hear you saying I think is very important, uh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Yes. That even if you are like in the case of Asiya, the wife of Pharaoh, even if you're in a bad marriage, but mm-hmm. being in marriage and complete yourself in that marriage 
has a certain yes. protection yes versus yes. not being married at all exactly and, and the quran uses the word muhsanat mm -hmm. uh, meaning fortified in a castle for married women that are uh, free in the quran meaning mm -hmm. the quran wants women to be fortified in marriage is is like the word is the word mm -hmm. castle muhsanat yes, yes. Yes, this this it's a it's a position of strength, okay. It's a position that is protected, okay. Even if the, even if the husband is pharaoh, okay, it's a position that is protected. Now the wife may not be mm, completely fulfilled in this marriage because of uh, pharaoh's distancing himself from from Allah. But the wife is not distant from Allah, okay? Mm -hmm. And certain things in the political realm will not be uh, uh, balanced correctly because of Pharaoh. But anyone who looks at his wife will automatically be guided to Allah, you see, mm -hmm. just by the, the virtue of her personage, okay? Mm -hmm. And she cannot be completed in the marriage but she, this is better than being unfulfilled and unprotected. Mm. Mm. So there's, there's a level of fulfillment that we're talking about. Now, mm. we, let's compare that marriage to what uh, the prophet said is the best marriage. Yes. The best marriage is the marriage that costs the least. Okay. Well, Pharaoh right. is not going to. He's he, he's not. You know, when Pharaoh gets married, it's it's an expensive event. You know, uh, <laughs> but the best marriage that th is the one that costs the least. Okay, that's because the two souls are drawn together, and they will do everything under their own power in order to make this happen. Okay. And when that happens, that marriage is actually better than Pharaoh's marriage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the level of spirituality there rises, okay, because of the uh, complementarity and the spiritual uh, 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 orientation of both partners. Okay, mm -hmm. both partners are seeking uh, the appropriate deen. Both partners are seeking to serve Allah. Both mm -hmm. partners are complementing each other metaphysically, spiritually, and physically. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have the best marriage, all of those three realms have to be brought together. They have to be brought together. So this 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 triad is is there's three kinds of love. Okay. There's a love for honor, for the chivalry, and mm -hmm. chivalry extends to the woman, not just the man, okay? Right. So there's the love of the chivalry. This is the love of divine order. There's the filial love. There's the affectionate love, okay? Mm -hmm. This is the same kind of love you have for your child or, or even for your, for your favorite uh, horse, okay? okay? You have an affection for this. So that's a, that's a soulish love, all right? Mm -hmm. The first love for divine order is spiritual. The second is soulish. Okay. Mm. The third love is eros, is mm. erotic. Okay. Mm. When you have all three, oh my God, this is an undefeatable marriage. You have mm. to kill them to destroy it. Okay. Okay. okay? Uh, so, and that's what, uh, that's what you see, because that's undefeatable metaphysically, spiritually, and, and physically, mm -hmm. this is why uh, uh, Iblis wants to destroy marriage. Because you mm -hmm. destroy this kind of marriage, you, 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 you win, you see, at least in the uh, physical realm, mm -hmm. in the physical and political realm. So that's what, they're, that's what uh, Iblis is doing, and he's using uh, the false religion, Okay, at the mm -hmm. first realm, he's using the false friendships at the second realm, and he's using the wrong kind of sexuality at the third mm -hmm. realm, you see. Wow, subhanAllah. So I hope that's uh, very clear, and uh, uh, I think maybe we can... So, we can so what is, uh, uh, you know, I, I get this question a lot. Um, what, one question.
get a lot is what if I don't find my wife attractive anymore? And and that well, is most likely because of everything else that's out there, right? The grass is always greener on the other side. Uh, part of that, I guess, is natural for from a guy's perspective. Uh, but you know, I get a lot of this. Like, I don't, I don't feel, I don't feel in love with my wife anymore. Does uh, do you? I know uh, sisters that have told me I don't want this marriage because I'm not in love anymore. Um, uh, and I always explain it like this, and you can uh, share with me your thoughts. But I always say that love is kind of like a wave. It, it doesn't, you know, it's not always going to be on top all the time. There's, it mm -hmm. might come down, and then there might be other times where it goes back up, and then it comes down. It's like a wave. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, do you have any thoughts about what to say to sisters or brothers who say, I'm not in love anymore? Ah, uh, yeah. Well, there's much to be said there. But you have to determine why you're not in love. There are several reasons for this, and it's not just, it's not all sexual, it's not all sensual. Mm -hmm. uh, there can be several reasons. You, you can be physically attracted and still not love. Sure, absolutely, yes. I've seen that. Yes. You can be physically attracted, and you, if you lose, you see this, this, the realm of chivalry, especially for, well, for both, but especially for the woman, if they, lose respect for their husband mm -hmm. they're not going to love him mm -hmm. all right their body may even respond sexually when he approaches them but this is a physical thing okay that they cannot control all right but the heart will not respond mm. okay so the passion is no longer there the passion, there's a, there's a limit to the passion. You see, you can have just the physical passion. Uh, that's the huffing and puffing and the banging of the drums, if you will. Uh, but the fulfillment of the passion is that which rings uh, and opens uh, the, 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 the divine experience of thana, mm. okay, that can be had in the sexual experience that, mm. that happens at orgasm. Many women, they will, you know, if they've lost respect for the husband, they will not orgasm. Mm -hmm. they, they may lubricate, they, 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 their body may respond, the nipples may protrude and all that sort of thing. But yeah. the orgasm, they remain anorgasmic, you see. Mm -hmm. So, and then this kind of woman will remain wanton. And then this kind of woman, her eyes are always, you know, wondering. OK, mm -hmm. and she's always trying to attract and she can't help herself. This cannot be helped because it's normal. You mm -hmm. see, it, marriage is supposed to fulfill all these realms. No. So then you have to ask, well, if she's lost respect for her husband, then what's wrong with him? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, maybe he's the chauvinist tyrant who's mistreating her. Yes, sometimes see? it's that. Sometimes it's that they're lazy. They're not working. Yes, well, the, that's, <laughs> that's a whole different realm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the man especially uh, in America, at least I can say, a lot of people that convert to Islam. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, the the wife is earning more, let's say, you know, mm -hmm. like let's take a scenario where I guess the, she's earning enough and, and, and the guy doesn't feel... He needs to work as much, so oh she always yeah. him lazy at home, and uh, it's hurting the marriage. Um, but they have five kids at the same mm -hmm. time, so mm -hmm. it's a very mm -hmm. tough situation. Um, what advice would you give to uh, to to uh, I guess in general in a situation like this? Like, how what is how much of this is our own doing, and how much of this is because we're in this situation that we're in? Well, it's 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 both, okay, because the the external pressures uh, are destroying fitra, as we've said before, mm -hmm. okay, and so uh, in and fitra for the male depends on fulfilling his destiny, okay. Mm -hmm. It's not doesn't depend on you know just being you know a husband to. Uh, a, a beautiful lady he must fulfill his destiny and he has to know himself in order to do that so mm -hmm. what is he meant to do 
what right. is his purpose in life? His purpose in life goes beyond the marriage because the dean pours over into the political realm and the social realm. So what is his position in society? And is his wife supporting that position? Is he fulfilling that position? Maybe mm -hmm. his position, he might be married to a lawyer and maybe his position is a, is a shoeshine boy, okay? Mm -hmm. If he's the best shoeshine boy on the block and all the, uh, all the best gentlemen from Wall Street come to his stall, okay, because he's the best, okay, mm -hmm. then he's, he's fulfilling his, his job, especially mm -hmm. when he's shining those shoes and he is witnessing, uh, he is doing dahua. In, in, in doing that, you see, and then all the all the boys, when they go back to Wall Street, they say, you know, my shoeshine boy, he's a Muslim, you know, but God damn, he does that shoe good, you see, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, you, and so, you know, this is this is actually a form of talk okay? Yes, but you know this because you have boys, you have gentlemen under you who are taking this kind of attitude into the street, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so. The, 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 the thing is, if a man is to be a man, he must be the best at what he does or do his very best at it. He doesn't have to be, uh, you know, world champion, but he does have to do his best. And if he's not doing his best, his wife will lose respect for him. Mm -hmm. If he's the best boot black on, uh, on, the, uh, on Wall Street and his wife is disrespecting him for that, then they are not equally yoked. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's probably better that they divorce, okay? Mm -hmm. Because God hates divorce, but He hates the feet, the, the the fitna in the marriage more than that. Divorce. Right. That's a very good point. Yes. So uh, you know, it, it, and yeah, you have to concern yourself about the welfare of the children. But you know, the Quran makes this very clear, and so does the Hadith. If you have to part, part in peace. Mm -hmm. Go in peace. You see. If you go in peace and respect each other, even out of the marriage, then the children will be fine. The children will be fine with this. Because what is ultimately of, of, of value here is truth. Mm. Okay? Is truth. Well, mommy, you don't love daddy anymore. Daddy, you don't love mommy anymore. No, no, we don't. And when they're little, you can't have explained everything. But as they grow, and if you respected each other, you will both have their ears. Mm -hmm. And the reality of the situation can be explained in terms that they don't make the same mistake. Maybe mm -hmm. this marriage was arranged, mm -hmm. okay? Maybe it was arranged by unwise parents, mm. okay? Yeah. No. so, I mean, you know, I, I know the stories of arranged marriages, and some of them, the rare exceptions, are done by wise parents. Mm. Most of them are unwise, and they're unwise because they are pursuing material status. That's right, yes, that's okay? right. And if you're pursuing material status, you are subduing fitra. You're repressing fitra, and you will never reach the spiritual realm. It's just impossible. So forget that. Mm -hmm. Forget it. Uh, now, another thing that happens a lot in the Muslim world is, so the girl gets married, she goes to the guy's house. Mm -hmm. They're living together with the parents, with the extended family. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, you know, the, the pressure from the mother-in-law to the daughter-in-law. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and and then the husband has this situation where he wants to please his wife, but he wants to please his mom. And then his mom wants things in her way. The wife wants things in her way. and But mm -hmm. she ends up feeling oppressed sometimes, or, or, or sometimes the daughter-in-law oppresses the mother-in-law. Um, a lot of times extended family is uh, becomes a source of difficulty. In a marriage, I've seen a lot of marriages break not because the two couldn't get along ultimately, but because of the surrounding family members. That is the husband's responsibility. Okay, the son often has to actually put his mother in place. You mm -hmm. see, because uh, he is the castle 
for his wife. Yeah. Okay? Not his mother. His mm-hmm. mother does not provide that castle for her. It's his responsibility. If a man cannot stand up to his mother, how is he going to stand up to the enemy of his faith? Mm. Impossible. Okay. This is no man. Mm. Okay. This is still a child. Okay. And the man can do this. The husband can do this. Uh, he can do it with, uh, with uh, even with a, a noble sentiment, okay, and gentle sentiment, but he has to be firm. Mm. And, you know, just say, look, mom, I love you, but this is my wife. I'm married to her, not you. Okay. Mm. And my job is to please her. Mm. Dad's job is to please you. Mm-hmm. Okay. My job is not to please you, okay? (laughs) That is my father's job. I am not your castle. My father is your castle. And Mm -hmm. you have no business in my house. You have no business in my castle, okay? Mm -hmm. Unless I invite you, okay? Mm -hmm. So you are not my queen. You're merely my mother. Mm -hmm. And I love you and I respect you, but you are not my queen. Dear mommy. Mm. <laughs> yeah. See? So, the, so the rights now, of the wife. If the are... man cannot do this, he's not reached manhood. You see. Mm-hmm. He's not that's, attained it. And the life, the wife, point. the wife will lose respect for him because he's not ruling over her with justice. Mm-hmm. So that brings us back to the dean. You right. see. Just because the Quran teaches us to honor our parents doesn't mean we have to obey them in everything. Right, of course. Especially and, and, and the honoring is, is ihsan. It's like, a, it's like part of perfection. Yeah. Whereas the rights of the wife are fard. They're an obligation. They're an obligation. That's right. They're an obligation. They're an obligation. So they, 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 they are above the rights of the mother. Okay. Yes, and now, I think a lot of people are not clear about that because I think parents drill in in the Muslim community the rights mm-hmm. of the parents, rights of the parents, rights of the parents so much that mm-hmm. when a lot of guys get married, they don't realize that the you know that's that was one relationship you had with your parents and that has rights too. Yes, mm-hmm. but your primary rights are to your wife over that's your correct. mom and dad. Yeah. That's correct. You see, and you have the spillover effect from if the man has taken his wife home to his father's house and they're living under his father's right. roof. Exactly. You've got a compound problem there. Yeah. Now, traditionally, this is not a problem in the old ways before, especially before the the, the West imposed its values. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you're living uh, if you have a son who's a tyrant living and who is uh, slobbering over his mother's salivations, <laughs> yeah. and then his father is also a tyrant, he's a super tyrant, you see, this poor lady he just brought home has no chance right. to fulfill herself. She has no yeah. chance to, to, to fulfill and complete her deen. It's almost impossible under those circumstances because she is suppressed. Everything about her is suppressed. She can't do this. She can't do that. She can't think this. She can't say that. Da da da. And then she wants to govern her own children. The mother-in-law won't won't prevent. Won't won't, won't permit it because mm-hmm. the mother-in-law knows better about everything. Oh my God! So the the son actually should go to the father first and say, "Look, Dad." This is my wife here, okay? You've got your wife, okay? And they, they've got to meet man to man, okay? The old ram and the young ram have to butt heads a little bit in order to uh, establish the territory and right. the rights within that territory. Mm-hmm. If the young man doesn't butt head with the old ram, he's not worthy of what is hanging between his legs. Mm. I'm going to tell you that right now. And when Iblis sees this, he can push that man in any direction he wants. Right, right, right. Yeah. And then uh, what about the other extreme? Uh, The other extreme is 
the wife is earning, the husband is earning, the wife is like, I don't have to listen to my husband. Oh dear. And, and uh, a lot of times, uh, uh, one of the major complaints I get is, you know, uh, we don't have enough time for intimacy or, sh you know, she doesn't allow intimacy. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and then a lot of times the girl really feels that I'm right, my husband's wrong, I'm not going to listen attitude. And, and she may be right, uh, I don't know, depending upon the particular situation, but it's kind of like this complete dismissiveness uh, because I think you're right that she somewhere along the lo line lost respect for her husband. But a yes. lot of times it's not because of that. It's just the attitude that she's developed. And a lot of these sisters get married. They don't get married early and and they become more, you can say, established in their ways and their nuances, mm -hmm. their life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and because what happens in the Muslim, in, in America I'm, I'm telling you straight out, like, this is what happens. If, if you get yeah, married sure. in your college years, then there's a good chance you'll get married in your college years and your MSA is the Muslim Student Association. You're doing Islamic work. You meet some sisters. You get, you know, you, you fall in love. You get married. Your parents are okay. But if you don't at that eight, at that time when you're in your early 20s in the university setting, then you get into your careers. You get busy. You're, you know, you just get lost into the into the into the corporate world and mm -hmm. then you finally get married maybe somewhere in your 30s or even some 40s mm -hmm. uh you know after they've completed because there's this perception that you have to be uh i guess established financially and so that takes some time and so you get married in your late 30s and now the wife is there and you're there but they kind of like see each other as almost equals in a sense that uh, I, both are saying, I'm not, I don't have to listen to her or I don't have to listen to him or I'm smarter than him or I'm smarter than her. And, and then th they're coming back to the masjid happens when they have children and they realize, okay, we have to teach our kids about Islam. And then you'll see uh, a lot of parents coming back to the masjid in their, you know, late thirties and forties. And they were missing mm -hmm. between that time period, between the mid twenties to the mm -hmm. mid uh, you know, to, to, the, to the 40s, they're like missing from the masjid. So you have this like mm. young crowd in the masjid who the parents are bringing a lot of times. And then this like kind of like older crowd. But the mm -hmm. crowd in the middle is is a lot of times not there, uh, especially if they're well to do. They have a career. They have a busy schedule. A a any comments on this scenario? Oh, dear. Well, that's all out of order. The The entire social structure there is out of order the development individually is out of order okay mm -hmm. the, uh, the you see the the purpose of uh, marriage is to help us to mature okay one cannot mature uh, without marriage it doesn't happen mm -hmm. you grow old but you don't mature subhanallah that's and a very you, good point. you see there's there's yeah. different levels of yeah. living with someone you have to deal with dealing with their emotions <laughs> dealing with their needs yes. that's what brings the maturity in over time yes. i guess yes and this is why the prophet said no one under the age of 40 should be put in a position of authority mm. uh, because by the time you're 40 your children should already be grown mm. <laughs> Yeah. That, that is the natural progression towards what the Jews like to use as the word is zakan, or the wise one, okay? Mm -hmm. That you, you reach by the time you're 60 or 70, you become uh, the white-haired uh, wise person. You see, this is an ongoing progression, you see. And if you miss that middle period between 20 and 40, you don't, you don't mature. So you, you have a lot of 40 year, 40 year old uh, peoples in position of authority there that never matured. You see? Mm. <laughs> they, 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 they miss those years and or they're catching up too late, you see. Uh, so there's, a, there's an element of, uh, of um, disorder here that has crept into the Ummah because of the uh, modern approach to social and political um, activity okay mm -hmm. so and education not to mention education and remember i told you before not everybody needs to be educated right 
in, in the same realm. So that's a this a whole educational system is a part of the grand level leveling. This is right. a communist endeavor. OK, so they're trying to get everybody to think the same. Yeah. So when you're describing here all these women, you know, who've reached this particular realm and they don't get married until their 30s and, you know, their eggs are being dispensed without uh, fruition. Um, the, the problem here is that they've they've been leveled and they've accepted a false ideation. Mm -hmm. They've accepted the material uh, uh, realm uh, 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 on their own provision as the castle, and it doesn't exist. It's all vanity. Right. The, the, right. This dean is empty. It's mm -hmm. not acceptable to heaven. You see, mm -hmm. it, and if he, if it's unacceptable he, to heaven, heaven does not respond. Mm -hmm. You see, heaven responds to sincerity and to truth. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. Sincerity. Well, third thing. It responds to sincerity, to truth, and to innocence. Mm -hmm. you know? Now, this realm, this middle realm here, where the people have not matured, where does that leave the children? Okay, so you, you've got a compound problem here that everybody has to admit before there's any solution found. In Islam, and the solution is found in Islam. You see, the compound problem is this: you have the older generation of tyrants, these chauvinists from the old world. Okay, you've got this middle generation who never matured, both mm -hmm. husband and wife. Okay, mm -hmm. and you've got the third generation that is looking at all of these lost people for guidance. Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> <laughs> and and you're the imam. <laughs> you're the imam over this kindergarten mm. of misguided fools, mm. and they don't even know that they're fools. Oh dear Lord, I pity you. Yeah, I I I, oh, I, I, I don't envy your position because you see. I'm sitting here pretty now. I'm approach. I'm approaching my 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 grave a few years in. You know, I don't have this kind of responsibility. All my responsibility is to pass what I know on to you, but you have to administer it. Oh my God, that's a different problem. That's a different responsibility, and you have to administer it to fools. Mm. <laughs> and they will remain fools until they accept the truth of the circumstance. Mm. You see, this is where did we start uh, uh, last week or two weeks ago now? Tauba. You see, Tauba. It begins with Tauba. You want to fix this thing, you have to have Tauba. Mm. And this Tauba extends to everything. Even those who are not must partake in the Tauba because they're guilty by association. Mm. You see? They're guilty by not saying anything, you see. You know, you, you, they, it, and if they don't concern themselves about it, uh, you know, you, there's, there's three ways to, 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 to wage jihad. One is with yourself. Uh, two, you actually take up the sword and you kill the enemy when it's justifiable. Uh, you speak against the enemy mm -hmm. and you or you pray against the enemy. OK, mm -hmm. now, if you have a problem of this extent and you can't kill the enemy who happens to be the fools that you're responsible for. <laughs> are, are you getting what I'm saying here? Yeah, yeah, you see, yeah. you have, you, you're, you're ruling over the enemies of the dean. Mm -hmm. They're actually practicing a, a lifestyle that goes against the dean. Mm. Okay. And you're ruling over them. Oh my God, you can't kill them. Mm. <laughs> so you can speak to them about it and you can pray about it. Okay. Mm. So you can, you can guide them. Uh, uh, it, it, so this is a big problem and it, how to, to solve this. Some, some people you see, Let's take uh, an individual by the time they're 40 or 50, some of their ways 
uh, cannot be changed. Mm. Okay, they, they they will not change. And if you talk to some of these old uh, uh, chauvinist dogs from uh, the the old country, uh, they won't even talk to you. Mm-hmm. They won't even talk to you. They won't. They'll just turn away and, and spit and, <laughs> and 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 go home. So. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. This is not a problem with an easy solution. Okay. Uh, one, one last question before we go. Um, that is that a lot of sisters that start wearing hijab, start covering themselves, uh, yeah. stop making themselves pretty. Oh, uh, dear. Uh, so, like, you know, you have, let's say, the, the husband's complaining, look, you know, there are all these beautiful women there, but when I go home, she's not dressed. Uh and you know, not trying to make herself uh, appealing to her husband. Uh, what what do you have to say to that? They're irresponsible, you see. Uh, but they they have to understand that a man is attracted to certain uh, physical characteristics. Okay, Allah has made the woman attractive. Um, I always say that the the woman wants to be desired. And she wants to be, um, uh, ad, she, she wants to be um, uh, 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 desired and, um, oh, what's the second word? Mm. I'm blocking on it right now because I, I've gone off track. Um, but the, the, she, wants to, she wants to be desired and, 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 and maintained, okay, mm. in safety. And the man wants to be admired and, and nourished. Oh, uh, now it comes back to me. The woman wants to be desired and cherished, okay? Mm. And the man wants to be admired and nourished, okay? Mm. <laughs> and uh, so this is, a, this is a nice little way to try and remember this uh, essence of the relationship. The woman is only attracted to the man as long as she maintains a certain uh, character, and certain characteristics in her physical being. Okay, mm. so the characteristic Allah made her like this. Okay, mm. Allah made the man like this. <laughs> it's right. it, it, very very different. Okay, if she loses this waist, okay, then she loses her attractiveness. Mm. Okay, it's just gone. The, the man physiologically, many men will not respond. Now, some men like obese women. It's, I, I've seen this. I've experienced it. But th- that's basically because their mother was obese. And so they, they grew up loving their mother. So they're going to love a woman like that. But most men are not attracted to women who lose their physical attractiveness, their shape. Mm. This, uh, this, uh, this uh, proportion is like a 70-30 proportion. Uh, I think Kim Kardashian has gone overboard with it. But um, uh, this, this hourglass shape, this, this uh, voluptuousness, this, um, uh, these curves are very important. Mm. If the man doesn't see them, if she's lost them, then he's not attracted to her. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about, you know, makeup and eyeliner and lipstick and all this sort of thing. That The physical attractiveness of a woman's face is, is either there or it's not. You can, you can enhance it, but that's a, that's a uh, false enhancement. Mm-hmm. What, what's important is cleanliness and mm-hmm. proper presentation. Mm-hmm. Now, if, she's, if your man comes home and she's in her house robe and she hasn't preened herself for the day, she hasn't combed her hair, uh, she hasn't washed her face, she smells, uh, and she's obese to begin with, uh, obese, because maybe she ate too much when she got pregnant and she couldn't get back her shape, mm-hmm. okay? The, the most a woman should gain when she's pregnant is about 10 to 15 kilos. More, no, any more than that is too much. Mm-hmm. And uh, half of that is the baby, you see. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a baby is five to seven kilos. Uh, you know, closer to five. So if she's gained 10 to 12 kilos, she loses half of it immediately with the, with the loss of the baby and the placenta and the fluids there that's gone. All she has to get back is to tone her belly a little bit. And, and you see many women like this. Mm-hmm. Many. Okay. Yeah. 
And there, there are uh, natural remedies that actually help women to get back into the shape and keep their shape. I, I, I had two wives that were back in their jeans in five weeks, okay, after, after pregnancy. And that's because I'm a homeopath and I gave them remedies to help them along the way. But they never overate. The women, mm-hmm. when they get pregnant, they find, their, they find their husband, they get pregnant, and they think, oh, I can let myself go now. Uh, my life is made. My castle is made. <laughs> this is an irresponsible attitude. These women mm-hmm. have disqualified themselves from the position of wife. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm sorry, they disqualified themselves from, from the position of concubine, okay, the, the desired wife, okay. Uh, so that means that uh, if they can no longer fulfill their husband's uh, desire and they're disqualified for this reason, then they still have an obligation to replace themselves with another woman who can, okay. Mm-hmm. Now, that doesn't mean divorce. Fortunately... Islam allows a man to have four wives. So right. if she's disqualified, the prophet said, well, if she's disqualified, she's too old, you don't desire her anymore. You can divorce her, but keep her in your household. Mm. Okay. Am I correct? Of course yeah, I am. I've, yeah. I've studied this, okay? I know that this, you can do this, but nobody does it, you see? Mm. Nobody does it. Uh, they're they're all too arrogant and too prideful to admit the truth of their circumstance. Mm. Yeah, they 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 don't admit it. So these women who are going around arrogant and pride, they become uh, fat floozies, you know, hiding under these big uh, hijabs and whatnot, uh, and uh, hiding their ugliness, and still acting like they're attractive. <laughs> these are fools. Mm. They're fools, mm. okay, and they're lying. Yes, I to guess them part of it is them. that the truth has to be said, right, in yeah. order to make it work. Or you yeah. go with the with the Dajali system that you know it's <clears throat> just schizophrenic, right? On the one side, it'll show you the media that this is what's an attractive lady like, and then on the other side, it'll tell you no, fulfill your appetites to the maximum, and and. <laughs> And so you have this, you know, and then that leads to a whole bunch of other uh, problems. But if you want to be truthful about it, it's very important how uh, the wife keeps herself. I remember a narration of Ali radiallahu anh that he was in the state of Ihram in Hajj. And he came home and he saw Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet, well-dressed. And he was upset. Mm -hmm. You know, mm-hmm. but the women at the time of the Prophet, they used to make a lot of, and the Prophet said this, that when your husband comes home, be well dressed and have a smile for him. And, yes. and that is for their own, you know, for keeping that position where they're the wife, but also attractive. Um, yes. And, yes. you know, just because if the husband's not doing his part, doesn't necessarily mean, uh, I guess in, in many cases, that she has to stop doing her part. Exactly. A lot of times what happens is, She's like, oh, the husband's not doing this. Well, I'm not going to do this, right? Yes. And then that throws things off from, uh, that's you know. That's natural. That's, that's natural because the, the subject follows the leader, okay? Mm-hmm. And if men are not holding themselves up to a better standard and they're not keeping themselves uh, fit, okay, mm-hmm. they're not... Uh, uh, you know, they're not attractive, they're not hygienic, they're, they've got bad breath, they smoke, mm. that, that, all, is, the, you know, this is going to put a woman off, of course. Right, right. And if they become obese as well, then the woman is going to relax her standard and she's going to say, well, what's the use? Right. You know, this is natural. It's not correct, it, but it is a natural course of events. Okay. Wow. I think this is a good place to stop, inshallah. Uh, We'll maybe pick it up right from where you are in some of these issues. We'll see how things go, uh, uh, inshallah, in our next talk. So thank you so much. I think uh, a part of the lesson for today is is that we are not true to ourselves a lot of times. We're not Mm. true to our situation. And so that comes back to Tawbah, that we need to admit to Allah that, you know, I kind of like didn't do things in the right order at the right time. 
uh, is, yes. is part of what you talked about. And then, of course, a presentation. And one important point you made is that uh, no one controls the how their face looks, but you can still control how your shape, your general shape is. Yes. yes. And and and, yes. and that's important, especially uh, for guys and for women. But you know more for guys when it comes men, to men. Men are men are uh, visually mm -hmm. stimulated. Okay? Yes. By the hourglass. Okay. Yes. By the uh, the curves that Allah has the charms that Allah has blessed women in. This stimulates men. It stimulates them physiologically. If they are not stimulated physiologically, they cannot respond and they will look elsewhere. This is natural. Okay. Right. It's okay. natural. That's why you have whorehouses within once within a block of the Kaaba. Did you know that? No, but I don't I believe it. I believe it. I, I <laughs> did read there. this article that there was like a like a, like a, like a place where guys hang hung out in Mecca to watch porn. I read an article. So, I mean, you know, those are the natural, uh, that's this is how shaitan works. So, yes. Anyway, thank you so much. Jazakumullah khairan. May Allah bless you and keep you with us, inshallah, for a long, long time. I mean, I mean, and you too, brother. Okay. Inshallah, let me uh, make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like. And make sure you leave your comments and ideas. Zakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.